Tak, já bych vás ráda uvítala všechny na našem World Cosplay panelu. Máme tady naše úžasné hosty. Já první, co udělám, tak já jim předám mikrofony, aby se vám sami představili. A vy, jestli budete mít nějaké otázky, nebo jestli vás bude něco zajímat, tak půjdete na slido.com, nebo slido.com, zadáte tam tady tenhle ten hashtag AFCZ19 a budete tam zadávat dotazy, jaké budete chtít, co vás bude zajímat a tímhle tím způsobem já, potom se ty dotazy tady objeví na té tabuli a vy budete moct se zeptat svých oblíbených cosplayerů na nějaké věci. Takže já vám teda děkuji, že jste všichni přišli a můžeme začít. So, hello. I would like to welcome you here at AnimeFest. Uh, first, I will pass the microphones and uh, leave them somewhere. <laughs> And so uh, I would like uh, you to introduce yourselves to us, please. Uh, so who will be starting? Elian, will you start? <laughs> Or... Okay. I can start. It's okay. If, am I holding it right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're working out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so hi guys. I'm Elian Cosplay. I'm uh, from Hungary originally. I grew up in Budapest. Uh, but now uh, we live in Germany. So we traveled from there. I mostly cosplay uh, Disney princesses, uh, and I'm really excited to be here and meet all of you. Hello. <laughs> That's better. Hello, I'm Maki Cosplay. I come from Belgium. Um, I cosplay since 2013. What I love the most is actually doing acts, and uh, I love also crossplay a lot, which means doing guys. And, um, That's pretty much it. I like creepy shit too. So <laughs> that's it. Can you? Yeah. Ah. Uh, nice to meet you. This is Hikari Green. I am from Japan and I'm cosplayer. I'm doing cosplay for over 17 years. Thank you. And I really love to be here and nice to meet you all again. Thank you. Hello, I am Captain Ghostly, but you can call me Matt. I'm from Belgium, and I'm mostly an armor maker and a prop maker, and I'm very glad to be here. Hello! Oh, that was louder than anticipated. Um, I'm Andy Valentine, uh, Valentine Costumes. Everyone just calls me Valentine, really. Um, I'm from the UK, as you can tell by this accent, and I'm enjoying being in European cons. It's nice to come out uh, before they shut the walls in Brexit when none of us are allowed out <laughs> anymore. Um, so we're trying to get out. And I mainly do cosplays of uh, either historical, kind of like Viking, The Witcher, or some anti heroes. I basically like villains, bad guys, and uh, ourselves. So yeah, that's, that's me. And uh, it's nice to be here. Thank you for your introductions. Uh, For the question, where is Maul? He will ha have his own panel with questions and answers, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, you can look in your schedules and find it. So if you want to see Maul at the question and answer panel, you go to that panel. And you enjoy, right now, you will enjoy these cosplayers, please. So Only one person left immediately, so <laughs> I think that's, that's a win for us. So, since nobody asked anything else, I would like to, with first obligatory question, uh, what is your favorite costume? Okay, so that question about what is your favorite costume and then the next one. So, can you please tell us your favorite costume that you've made? I'll kick it off. Um, I actually made one five years ago, which I have, in the last three weeks, remade again mm -hmm. for this weekend which is Prince Oberon from Prince of, uh, Game of Thrones, which I'll be wearing tomorrow. So I'll be yellow and flouncy and... Uh, apologies if you talk to me, because I will smooth you as Oberon. Um, I, I will be very in character over the weekend. So I'm very much looking forward to redoing that, uh, uh, re-wearing that uh, tomorrow and Sunday. So yeah, that's, that's one for me. And I believe we will be looking forward to see it. <laughs> So my favorite costume is Einstein from Dark Souls. There's a picture there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, why it's my favorite? Because I learned so much from that costume. I struggled so much, but in the end, it's like all worth it. All the tears, all the blood, it's all worth it. Okay, my favorite costume is uh, United States from Hetaria, Alfred F. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> So maybe seven years ago, I was really active on DeviantArt. Then I like to post every day about Hedaria cosplay photos. Then my favorite is America, so I cosplayed all versions of Hedaria's America costume. So I feel really happy to you know, create Hedaria costume and especially of America. So my favorite costume is Sweeney Todd from the movie Sweeney Todd, which I'm gonna be wearing tomorrow, so I'm excited. And I also... Um, like this costume a lot because uh, it was uh, as a lot of cosplayers have issues and scared to be doing some costume because of showing body and everything. This costume is actually one of my scare because of showing body, and mm -hmm. so I'm proud to actually uh, have it done. <laughs> so as I already mentioned, I, I mostly cosplay Disney princesses, and I, I really like all of them. Uh, but I have a really special connection to uh, our princess as well, and so my favorite is uh, my CC cosplay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so, and the question we are all waiting for, is this your first time in Czechia? Yes. Yeah. For everyone? Yeah. No? Pass him the microphone. When were you in Czechia? Yeah. I. I yeah. I came here like 10 years ago to go drinking. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that was it. I mean, um, the booze is really cheap here, so... Yeah, you can live like a king here. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's second time for me. Yeah, okay. So, and, yeah, you? It's not my first time, but I had meet a friend from Czech Republic, mm -hmm. and I know one word in Czech, it's like, Mopici <laughs> Kamo. <laughs> and I wanted to say it. Uh, you can actually say it before the 10 p.m. because it's... Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, Elion, maybe, uh, is cosplay your full-time job? Yes, it is, but not as a guest. I'm actually graduated as a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm taking commissions and, uh, and working on cosplay commissions is my full-time job. So I'm basically creating cosplays for others. In full time. And how many commissions uh, per year are you able to make? That's a really difficult question. It mm -hmm. really depends on the on the difficulty because, uh, for example, the last time I was working on a I don't know if you know the uh, Hannah Alexander artworks mm -hmm. design, so mm -hmm. it's a really really difficult uh, design, and that took more than I don't know three months. Mm -hmm. But there are sometimes uh, costumes that only takes like a week. So yeah, it really yeah. depends. I I can't yeah, really answer. <laughs> And uh, is cosplay a full-time job for you? It is not. Uh, my full-time job is actually, I work in a fabric shop. So uh -huh. it's really handy when you're doing cosplay. Um, but I also make a costume, historical costume for my hometown, mm -hmm. since we do a lot of events about history and everything. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, for me, it gets my full-time job since last year. And since then, I was working with uh, one of the biggest financial company in Japan, and I get independent since last year. So I'm my name. My name in Japan is not only cosplayer, but my name is financial cosplayer Hikari Green. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it is a full-time job, mainly guesting. I also work together with the cosplay shop, but I don't get paid for that. So I go from convention to convention to convention. And like my passion is like learning people how to make armor. That's what I enjoy doing the most. Yeah, it is very much not my full-time job. Um, I'm a software engineer. Um, I write counter-terrorist -terror software for the Ministry of Defense. Um, so it's pretty different. Uh, yeah, no, I just do it as a creative outlet. Um, I was going to expand on that, but there's more on that, I guess, in further questions. So I shan't, but no, not my full-time job. Mm -hmm. And I have a question for Hikari. What's the hardest part in making cosplay? Um, for me, I think 
uh, cosplay in Japan and cosplay here in Europe are just slightly different. For me, I'm made in doing male costume, but the hardest part is for me wig. Because, you know, many male characters have many difficult, difficult shape of the wig, so I have to take too much time to make, you know, accuracy, make accurate shape for the wig. Mm -hmm. And uh, for you, Maki? What is the hardest part in making costumes? Uh, well, since I'm a, my full-time job is selling fabric, the hardest part is actually find the right fabric results. When yeah. it comes to that, it's really I'm really super picky. Uh -huh. So it's like, yeah, but this is no, nah, this is not the right color. It's like my friend, it's fine. No, it's not fine. <laughs> and then uh, it's, this is the hard, hardest part for me. And actually, get over my procrastination is also hard. <laughs> That's the hardest part for everyone. Yeah. And the picking the right fabric is especially hard for the movie costumes. Yeah. This is especially what I do most yeah. is movie and video games. Uh -huh. It's like you have to get the super right thing. And sometimes I, I, I did a costume when there was a little pile of fabric, fabric I didn't find. And I did the fabric myself because I'm so yeah. mad. Uh, I saw that you did the fabric for Oberyn. Yeah, it's all hand printed fabric. Cause uh -huh couldn't buy it off the shelf. And I actually spoke to Michelle Clapton, who's the costume designer for Game of Thrones. Yeah, and yeah. she basically told me, it's not purchased, it's printed. So I had to print it. And it was effort. <laughs> Lots mm -hmm. of uh, lino printing and hand printing. And yeah, but it came out well. I'm really pleased with it, as we'll see tomorrow. We'll hopefully. see tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And um, probably for Captain Gosley, uh, which cosplay of your career was the hardest to make? Yeah, so like I mentioned before, it was the Einstein cosplay because there were a lot of new techniques and because of procrastination, I had a really hard deadline to reach and there were casting, prop making, There's painting. a special question. Could you speak a little louder? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, um, I believe that's for everyone. <laughs> yeah, so my Einstein was the most difficult because of all the different techniques and because of my own fault of procrastinating, which is probably my hardest task in cosplay is actually starting on stuff instead of doing some, something else. Like when you paint, I start painting and the instructions is like 30 minutes to dry. So I go watch an episode of something and that becomes two episodes, becomes three episodes. And then it's like morning and you've only painted like one little part. <laughs> Yes. And so for you, Elion, what's the hardest? What's the hardest cosplay or what's the hardest thing? Uh, maybe both. both. <laughs> okay, so uh, because I, I mainly uh, do sewing, uh, for me, everything which is more like uh, armor crafting is still seems like magic. Uh, I'm trying to do it, but I, I struggle with it all the time. Uh, but still, I would say my most difficult uh, cosplay was uh, Glinda from uh, the Wicked Broadway musical, uh, because I, I had to hand to uh, 40,000 sequins on it. And well, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it was so time consuming. So I had to force myself to do it for a really, really long time. So I guess that's it. So, and uh, what is your biggest cosplay struggle? What was probably Maki's biggest cosplay struggle? Biggest what? Struggle. Cosplay struggle. My biggest cosplay struggle, huh? Get it done on time? <laughs> yeah. that I am a rush queen, it's like no rush, no fun. Uh, but yeah, that's the, and also like, I think the biggest struggle is like the proportion. When you're like having to put a two, 2D thing into real life, it's like concept game, don't have any ID, like floating armor, yes, of course, and of course fabric sticks to people, of course, but like, and then you have to put those things in 3D and, and animate it to real life, and that's, that's the p biggest, hardest part of it, I think. This is where I struggle the most. And how are you enjoying your time here so far? It's good. So and far, the so food good? Is good. <laughs> I think I just, on that struggle thing, um, and I, you I, can I, talk just, about your struggles as well. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> for, for me, it's, it's not necessarily about the art of the craft or anything. It's about um, a mindset and the ability to stop 
comparing yourself to everybody else, especially people who've already done that costume. So for me, as I've just found out meeting him for the first time, I'm very much like Maul, right? I've got, we've got a similar kind of age, similar kind of beardy hair shape look. So we have a similar range of costumes and we do have a lot of crossover with costumes. So being someone who makes the same costumes in the wake of somebody who's as popular as he is, and every time I, every time I say where my get out, someone goes, hey, have you seen Maul's get out? I'm like, yeah, of course I've fucking seen Maul's get out. Um, you know, and it's just too, too, I think for people who are especially starting out quite early, um, it's a really destructive mindset to get into and getting past that and just realizing actually you're doing things for yourself, you know, and your own pleasure of doing them, not to necessarily compete against somebody else where competition isn't implied is a really difficult thing to do. Um, and I think as soon as you can get past that, that's great. And you know, you can allow you to get on with your own things. But that was always, that was a huge struggle for me early on. And unfortunately, um, I tell myself I'm past that, whether I am, that's another thing. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a difficult one. I don't know. Yeah, oh, here we go. So uh, I, I follow this point, like it's really difficult to not compare to each other on the work. But I, I like to think is that you have your own take of the character you're doing. And the way you're doing the cosplay, even though the way you're acting it, it's like, OK, I love this character, and I'm going to show you why. That's why you're doing your cosplay for. And so that's it also like how I talk about it when I do my act panel is like, you have to show why you love your character. Uh, b best question popped, uh, popped right now. How can I cosplay as a student with no money? Just wait me, take me off my costume, and you will see how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so how can I cosplay as a student with no money? OK, I, I probably need some time to think about it. No, actually, you can start cosplaying with e easy cosplays as well. And, uh, I'm pretty sure all of you think the same, but you can you can make cosplays from whatever you find, really at home. And uh, I actually sometimes uh, use leftover fabrics as well, so really everything. But you can you can build armors from paper mache, and that basically costs nothing. So you can just start, enjoy it, and and improve it on the way. And yeah, yeah, and nobody says you have to do like uh, three costumes per convention. You yeah, can do one not. costume and, and per year. And don't start with a big project because, yeah. yeah. That will that just demotivate be... you because exactly. it's not done. A few years ago, I started a, a G1 Optimus Prime made entirely out of cardboard boxes that I took from a local supermarket. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so other than the paint cost, that would I mean, I didn't do it in the end, um, but you know, it, there's, there's materials out there that you can pilfer, for want of a better term, acquire. Um, yeah, there's lots of options. Captain? So, like, my first armor costume was Sauron from Lord of the Rings, and there was no cosplay shop in that time, so I had to go to a decathlon and buy, like, these yoga mats. I had like eight yoga mats, and I go to the cashier, she was looking like, what are you going to do? And so I make my Sauron armor, and I want to try it in the end, which is not smart. It was too small. I couldn't fit in it. So me going back to the decathlon to buy eight sheets like of these yoga mats again, and it was the same cashier, that was really <laughs> awkward. So still there's like, you don't have to use the, the most expensive foam. Of course, it will be better, but you don't have to use it. You can use cheap um, puzzle tiles you put on the floor, cheap foam. Um, you can replace anything by anything, basically. But you know, the, that wouldn't be that you know, weird if you were buying uh, you know, ropes and cucumber and something like that. <laughs> I think eight sheets of yoga mats are <laughs> quite OK. But uh, then I have a question for Hikari. Uh, which conventions around the world would you recommend and why? Uh, <laughs> That's like choosing your favorite child, I know. I know. Uh, it's it's very, very difficult question for me. Mm. You, can, you can answer? I can answer. Okay. Um, but 
I can say about the most impressive convention. I've been to so many Japanese conventions, but for me, it's growing too big. So I, once I was doing comic market organizer, but it's way too big, so it's really hard to manage. But for me, the most impressive convention was the, the one in Israel. So last time I was, I was going to Israel, and there is a convention. It, it's still way growing, and I was impressed a lot about the memories. So I, can, I don't know I can answer properly, but that's what, what I, my result. And another of you, would you say something about uh, recommending some conventions to us? Yeah, I got one. It was actually three weeks ago or something. I was in Scotland. It's called Rikon Spring. It's like a very, very small convention. But it was amazing because these Scottish people, they don't stop drinking. Like, there it's was a guy... Scotland in it. I'm sold already. <laughs> yeah. There was a guy laying on the ground and he was completely drunk in cosplay, which is amazing. And he took off his wig. And you know, the under the wig hair and everything. And he was like yelling, like, Scots might go down, but they never go out. So he was like laying on the ground, battling himself. It was amazing. That sounds <laughs> but, like a Czech convention called Festival Fantasia. <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing as well. Like, um, people were very open. Like, hair people are open as well, of course. But like, they, you, you enter there, and it's like everyone is friends with literally everyone. And for me, that, that's, that's so awesome to see. Or they see a cosplayer walking and they go like, oh, nice costume, how did you make this? And, and it's just two strangers who never saw each other before and they start talking. And I, I feel that's very heartwarming. For me, in a similar ilk, um, part, like, so my partner and I, every year we go to Dragon Con, because um, it's, it's something else. I, I, I don't know if you've, experienced a large American con. Obviously we're expecting what, six and a half thousand people here this weekend. So there are 80,000 people over five hotels. Um, and because they're set in hotels, and there's no closing time. So you'll kind of start, well I'll personally start my convention about five or six in the evening. And then by 4 a.m. you're wandering around in the hotels and someone will go, hey there's a party in this hotel room, come in here. You're like, okay, and then you leave at 7 a.m. and it's, it's ridiculous. And it's just it's almost seven days now. It's six and a bit days of non-stop 24-hour party with people in costume. And it's wonderful and everyone's just there just to have a good time. Yeah, it's one of my, one of my highlights of the year every year. And it's going to be something that I continue to do until... Um, awkwardly old to be there, I think, and then I'll continue to do it for a few more years, mm -hmm. and then probably slide into my grave sideways. Yeah, it's going to be good. Thank you. Elion, would you recommend any conventions? Yeah, my... Is it fair? Okay, yeah. I always have to check. Uh, so yeah, my big, big favorite convention is Dokomi in Germany, in Düsseldorf, and it's just amazing. It's a must for us every year. Uh, it has the most amazing park next to the Expo building, uh, the park has different parts. It has a Japanese garden, it has a, basically a French park, like the castle park with fountains in it. And, and you can really take whatever cosplay picture you want to uh, take there, it's, it's really awesome. And uh, lots of people uh, don't even buy tickets because they are just spending time outside in the park. Everyone has a, a picnic blanket with, blanket with them. And basically, we spend the whole, whole uh, weekend in the park and just chill outside. And everyone is wearing cosplays. And really, it's just so much fun. I really like it. That sounds very good. And Smacky, would you recommend any conventions? I haven't been so around the world, so I don't know. But I like small cons better than big cons. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you get to meet more easier people and, uh, and uh, just enjoy like a really friendly con. Like uh, There is a really, really, really small con in Belgium that I really love to go. I really rather go to that con than big cons in Belgium. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's really good. I like that. Better. Yeah, and uh, probably again, question for Elion: What do you enjoy the most about cosplay? 
as I already said, I'm a, so my profession is basically fashion designer, and I really, really like sewing. So I would say the uh, crafting and sewing part is what I enjoy the most. Uh, but I also really like uh, meeting new people and, and talk, talking with them and sharing information about how we made our costumes or just find someone who wears the same thing that you do and, and you just realize that you, you like the same character for whatever reason and, and I really like that. And uh, Captain? Uh, for me what I like the most is teaching people like everyone has their own way, but you have to start somewhere. So I love to give panels, workshop, because if you teach someone and then they make something and then they come all proud to you, look, I made this. And it doesn't matter how it looks, you're like, ah, oh, it's so cute. And, and it's <laughs> just this. an amazing feeling. Like people will come like, thank you for helping me to starting me. For me, that's the most amazing thing. Okay, and Maki, was there ever something that pissed you off or disappointed you so much that you wanted to quit with cosplay? Uh, well, that's a harsh question. Uh, uh, what pissed me off the most... That, what pissed me off the most is one of the things I hate the most is like, when you're on a convention and you see a cosplayer wearing the same cosplay as you and they are looking at you like, it's like, we are doing the same costume, which means we love the same thing. Come and take a picture. I mean, that's yeah, why I hate yeah. the most, like when they are looking down at you because of your skills. It's like, no. It's like, everybody has their skill, everybody has their life, everybody should do cosplay, should whatever, cosplay whatever and everything. And also I got, I got people also coming to me saying like, I should not cosplay guys because it's not ladylike. And I hate that. It's like. You have a problem, it's because I'm harder than you? What's the point? Like, uh, so I, I'm pissed at that. Like, that's what pissed me the most. Like, do not tell me what to do with my hobby. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. So, Hikari, did anything piss you, piss you off uh, so much? Um, <laughs> that you wanted to end um, it? In Japan, uh, five years ago, uh, before five years ago, cosplay was not mainstream. And people think cosplay, cosplayers are weird people and they must have some problem in their private or something like that. So then, you know, I, I told you I was working in a financial company and I was working there for 10 years as a professional economist. But then somebody pissed me uh, that you were working in financial company, but, but why, why you are doing cosplay? That means, you know, then cosplay is not mainstream. So some people say, you are weird, so you are doing cosplay. <laughs> but I don't think so. And I really have big pride to doing cosplay. So I keep doing cosplay. And in the end, now, cosplay gets more mainstream in Japan. So now I say I'm financial cosplayer. <laughs> and I had, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, a little while ago, made Ragnar from Vikings. And it took me a year. A thousand hours over the course of a year to make this thing and it was the I still think the best thing I've ever made it was one-to-one -one. it took a long long time and I was wearing it to a convention and I put a social media post up about it saying I'm gonna be wearing this and it got a number of likes I don't remember what it is but I needed a second outfit for this weekend so in like two days I made a shoddy version of bird person's wedding outfit from Rick and Morty um, my girlfriend went to Tammy, everyone told her to fuck Tammy at the end. Uh, anyway, so I made this thing and I put the photo of that up on social media and it exploded. This like thing I'd spent two days doing <laughs> compared to this thing that I'd spent a year doing. And it was so frustrating, the fact that all the efforts and so, uh, don't get me wrong, I mean, that, the Viking stuff did well in its own way in, in other things. But the fact that there was these two posts within a day of each other and one of them blew up and the other one was kind of, eh, that kind of, it may, almost made me completely change the way I costumed as opposed to giving up. I didn't in the end, I, I stuck to my guns, I was like, it'll pay off in the end, and it kind of almost is slowly starting to, but that was really frustrating, and it was, a, a, again, a lesson learned about the power of social media means nothing, so just ignore it. Um, yeah, so that, that was that. Yeah, okay. 
And uh, probably what was uh, the most embarrassing moment of you wearing your costume? I mean, I've just been goaded into doing a front flip on bloody stage by Mole. <laughs> oh. So that's, that's going to go down in the Hall of Fame. Um, my very first ever costume competition and my very first con, uh, I, was, I did Ezio from Assassin's Creed as my first ever costume. And I had no idea how a performance would go on a walk-on. It was just a walk-on masquerade. But they had all this energetic music going and they were supposed to play my theme of running across the rooftops. Mm -hmm. I was going to do some slow motion running stuff. Anyway, the musical died and it didn't work. And so I ended up running onto this, I don't know what it was, some Euro pop. Uh, it was, so my slow motion running made no sense. Um, so I ended up doing kind of like the running man. And then I watched it back on video and it was, it was even less smooth than I thought it was, um, which was not very smooth at all. So that was, that was a good start. And I, fortunately, it's gone uphill since then, until about half an hour ago. Thanks, Ben. And what was the most embarrassing moment with costume for you, Elion? Uh, I don't have a, an exact story for embarrassing, actually, but uh, as an awkward thing, uh, I think most of you, if you are a cosplayer, you know this, this feeling when at a convention you meet someone and, and they come to you like, oh, hi, it's so nice to see you again. How are you? And then you talk for like half an hour. And in that half an hour, you, you really try to remember that who the hell is this? <laughs> so in general, that's quite awkward, but that's it. And then the person leaves and you, you're looking at your friends like, who the hell was that? Exactly. <laughs> and no one knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's because we change our faces and, and wigs and everything as we go. Uh, yeah, does I mean, anyone... I, I've had someone got offended that I didn't recognize her. And I was like, you're wearing something different. Isn't that literally the point? Um, but apparently not. That's actually a really good thing that uh, someone doesn't recognize you because that means that you're doing your job good. I had it even with a judge. So I was judging a competition and I saw the girl like outside of cosplay. And then we were backstage preparing to judge. She was, she was in cosplay. And I was like the whole time, who is this girl? And we talked like for hours before the judging. And I didn't realize until she said, oh, I'm a judge as well, you don't remember me. I was like, oh, better run away. <laughs> Any other embarrassing stories? Well, um, I got mistake a lot in my country. Well, in, when I go in France, I got mistake a lot by another fam more famous cosplayer there, uh, because we look alike, apparently, which I don't think so. But and then we had a booth together. She was next to me, and then there was a girl come. She was not there, and a girl came and talked to me for hours. And she was. T I felt like I didn't recognize her that we met before or something. And uh, I talked to her and everything. And then she said, "Oh, and how are you going in school in Lyon? I know you were going right." And I'm like. Well, I'm not that girl, you know. <laughs> she just looked at me blank and then left. I was like, bye, but nice to meet you, though. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, how, how, probably that's, that's something like an uh, embarrassing story itself, uh, traveling with costumes. How unconventional is the traveling with costumes for you? I will we'll start with Captain Ghostly, please. It's very hard for me because I have this huge armor and like most of the time I put it in a box and ship it with DPD or something to the convention so the owner of the convention gets it at home and has to bring it to the, to the con. But sometimes I bring it with me in a suitcase if there's no time to ship it. And like there's always problems like they are asking what's inside, or you are walking at the airport with a box like this, and you can't even see in front of you or something, and so it's like a pain in the ass. And for my workshop, I take like foam clay as well, and I have like um, a gender bent Akali cosplay, a KDA Akali, and it has like a mask, and, a, and there's like uh, lights inside, so if I speak, like the mask lights up whenever I speak and they can't be in my checked-in luggage. So they have to be in the carry-on luggage. And they always think it's some kind of bomb because there's this plastic gooey thing and electronics. And they're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like the, their scanner says it's safe, but they see 
that it's not. And they always ask me, what is this, what is this? Mostly it's like, they ask, I say it's foam clay. They're like, foam clay? I say plasticine, and then they understand. But sometimes, some countries are like way harsher, like Bulgaria. They took me into a room with like two officers, and they were like, like literally like in the movies. They were like sitting like this, and they were saying, so what are you going to do with this? What's the use of it? And I'm like, it's for cosplay. <laughs> and they are like, cosplay? <laughs> and then I have to explain it's like some kind of theater because else they don't understand it. And it's very awkward, like the, the driver is waiting for you to pick you up and you're like, yeah, I'm going to be stuck here for a while explaining why I took this. And then what they did is like they took a sample, they put it through some machines and then they were like, Okay, you can go. And I had to go through the same gate for your border control, for where you have to show your passport. But I didn't remember which gate. So I was like, I don't remember the gate. And then they, they let me through like some small area and it was like creepy. Like I was like, so this is how I die. I'm stuck here. <laughs> and to anyone else? Well, traveling. Okay, so next question. Uh, what is your first costume and why? And I want all of you to answer this question because. So we'll start here. Yeah. So, like I just said, it was uh, it was Ezio from Assassin's Creed. Um, why was I don't know really. It was just it was relevant at the time, um, and me and my friend decided to go as a pair of computer game assassins. So I did that, and he did. I don't know the character name, but it's the lead from Splinter Cell, with the like the light up yellow stuff. It's a bit old school game, but um, yeah. So we did that. Um, no real deep meaning behind it. It was just, it was cool, and that, I mean that got me obsessed with it. You know, I spent a couple of hundred hours turning this pile of material into this thing I could wear. I was like, I need to do that again, and it yeah kept going. It was great. Thanks. Yeah. So my first real cosplay, because I had some bot cosplays, like, you know, the, the anime cosplays and so I bought. So my first one was actually Sauron from Lord of the Rings. It was a big armor. It wasn't that good, but I was like watching Lord of the Rings. I was like, so I want to start making armor. Let's do this. And it was insane to, to make it as a start. But I joined a cosplay contest on facts. And even though the armor was really bad, I still won somehow. It gave me like a huge boost to make new costumes. Um, my first cosplay is 17 years ago. And I hope someone knows this game, but um, I'm cosplaying Nina from Suikoden 2. Suikoden is a game from Konami. And then I'm I still student and my parents got angry my doing cosplay it's, and they said it's waste of money and waste of time but I made my costume by myself so then I ha I'm student with no money but I made it and I enjoyed it a lot and it's a kind of a beginning of my cosplay and I keep in that for 17 years in the end. Oh, you have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really have, really have to? Okay. Um, my first cosplay was Nyan Kat. <laughs> and I'm still pretty proud of it because I was shitting rainbow. <laughs> but no, but really, I, wanted to, I just love cats. And uh, this video was viral back in the, at that time. And I just went like, oh, I want to do it. And so I, I custom a dress and uh, bought some different stuff just to make it colorful and everything. And drew some cat whispers and then went to the con and was Super happy. And were the people at the convention happy? I didn't have the song with me, so yeah, it was okay. But I, I thought I was picking a speaker, but I was like, nah, not maybe a good idea. Even me, I will be discussed on the song at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, for me, the first one that we can officially call a cosplay and not just wearing weird clothes to a convention uh, was Giselle from Enchanted, so the Disney movie. Uh, and I chose her because, like, well, Disney princess, 
the yes, white well, dress or the no one? actually the the green one that she makes from the yeah, curtains the green one. Yeah. Uh, because uh, really like she's such a naive and sweet character and I really love in the movie that uh, Disney is making fun of itself basically mm -hmm. and uh, we entered a, a, a competition there and uh, I had the same experience as Matt had so we really had the first uh, boost with uh, winning a, a competition there and uh, I think uh, the French Nikita cosplay was one of the uh, the judges and like she's basically the Disney princess so mm -hmm. I was really amazed and it really made me start falling in love with cosplay yeah and there's another question uh, that's probably for some advice of you uh, what should we do when we do not have a, enough courage uh, probably this will be the last question for drink. you drink drink okay <laughs> next thing <laughs> Although I know it's like very bad advice, but it does work though. Like, I'm not saying like you, you drink until you're drunk. No, no, don't do that. Not even until, not even until tipsy. Do but, drugs, kids. <laughs> no, no, but like for me, for me personally, when I had like stage fright, like the first time I was guesting, I was like, bam, 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 bam. but I had like one little sip, like one little sip of alcohol. And suddenly I could like talk very smooth and everything. I was like, wow, I, I didn't drink now, that, but. That sounds like Raj from Big Bang Theory. <laughs> yeah, and I know it's, it's not the best advice you can have. I should better shut up, but <laughs> it's something that, that I did and it worked for me. It's more like a funny story. Well, I do think the courage, like to make the costume, go on stage, what's the, both? Well. The courage to make the costume is like uh, just at some point you might maybe find someone that can help you because it's always easier when you do in groups or we do with someone that can actually help you. My first costume, my really first costume, I help I had help from my mom that got a little bit hard to sew, so I was like not going all, so all blinded in it. So always find people and always like for stage if you're stage frightened. Mm -hmm. Go find someone and like, actually help you go on stage or do little cons with really little... Hey, there is some cons that actually called catwalk, so it's not, you don't have to do an act. You just go on stage and then show your costume and then go off. It's like step by step, baby step, but then you have to remember one thing though. Even though you are used to do a lot of cosplay stage and everything, you will always be stressed and you will always be scared. If you're not, that means something is wrong. Mm -hmm. It's the adrenaline that pushes you to do best and to do better. So you will always be stressed, but it's okay. At some point, you just like live with it. Like anxiety is my, uh, is my friend, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Jokes aside about the drinking, her advice is way better. Do please do what? her advice. What? To get help instead of the drinking. Yeah, but well, drinking is good though. But you can drink after. Okay, so we <laughs> It's can... like you did the thing and you're like, yeah, let's go drink. <laughs> we can all say that the drinking is good. So if yeah. you, you have any advice? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give drinking. a bit that doesn't encourage rampant alcoholism. Um, not that I'm against it. Where are we going for drinks later actually? Oh, we'll figure that out. Um, there's, there's, there's a thing that took me quite a while to do and it was, um, it was holding me back in a lot of ways because I wasn't like experiencing things in the right way and it was knowing my own worth and I always something I've always tried to encourage people to do is know your own worth and what I mean by that is if you're making your first cosplay and you're really unsure about it you don't know how good it's going to be um, firstly it doesn't fucking matter to be perfectly honest, if it's the shittest thing that anyone's ever created, it doesn't matter, you've made something. And it's better to have made something awful and learn to why it's awful and to be able to, you know, when you get to the end of making a costume and you stand back and go, well, that's shit, it's because by the time you got to the end, you've learned things along the way that you look at it back and go, yeah, I wouldn't have done that like that now, I've learned something and I've actually if I was to do it again I'd do it different and the, it's not about that costume it's about what you do with that knowledge and by knowing your worth you know you begin to know that you know these things and that you you know the stuff that you create is it's not f really for anyone else it's for you and I know people it's easy to say that and it's harder to actually do that 
Um, but I think as soon as you step out of the mindset of I'm doing this for somebody else or I'm doing this in order to go and be impressive or, you know, because I want to be a professional cosplayer or be a guest or be a judge or whatever. As soon as you step out of that mindset and realize actually it's all about the journey of learning something and applying a skill, then everything can shift. And so that's what I would encourage rather than that and drink. Yeah, okay. So, you know. So can I just add something real quick? Yeah, like, but quick. <laughs> wait, sorry. But the, the thing that helped me the most when it got too scary is like I prep a lot. Like, for example, if it's cosplay, I make lists, tons of lists, so I can actually visualize where I'm at and everything. I can draw things and everything, so I get things out of my mind and putting on paper, so it's really less scary than everything makes it up here. And also when it comes to stage, the most you're prepared, the most you have real soul and everything, the less you're stressed and scared because you know what's going to happen anyway. Yes. That, so well, mostly. Thank, thank you for the last advice. That was uh, unfortunately the last question. So I would like to thank you for your time here. And uh, I want to, you to enjoy the rest of the convention. And I wish you to enjoy the rest of the convention. Uh, ostatní co, jste, co se nestihlo za vaše otázky, uh, budou tady naši hosté sedět na princstánku svém, takže když budete chtít se jich na něco zeptat, neváhejte, přijďte za nimi, popovídejte si s nimi, když budete chtít. And uh, thank you again. And that's the, this is the end. Can everybody... Thank you for coming. Can yeah. everybody wave? Can you all wave for the camera? There's not a lot of waving going on. Say hello to the camera. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.